Good morning to you. It's April the 8th, the morning of April the 8th, 2011. Wherever you are in Grenada, Caracou, and Pity Martinique, and the rest of the world, we want to welcome you this morning to our Spice Morning program. And what a pleasure it is to be with you wherever you are. Certainly hope you're up and about and not being challenged by illness, but I know there are people being challenged. And those of you who are challenged, we want to wish you well. Uh, hope that you're heeding to the advice of your medical provider. And let's hope with time you, there'll be healing and you will be up and about. Well, we want to say happy birthday to those of you who are celebrating on the April 8th birthday. Uh, good morning to you again, and it's the start of a weekend, so there should be no excuse for friends and relatives to do something wonderful for you and make you feel like a VIP. And if you're celebrating an anniversary on this day or during the course of the weekend, we, sal we salute you and again wish you well, and I'm sure it's going to rekindle the great memories of when it all started. In terms of the world of sports, it's Jamaica up against Combined Colleges this morning at the 3W Oval in Barbados. Combined Colleges, they had no problem in beating the Windwards. And Jamaica and Trinidad, they ended in the court, but the court dismissed Trinidad and Tobago's application that the match be awarded to them. Trinidad, they were complaining that they finished second in the standings. Their contest with Jamaica ended with Jamaica scoring 600 plus runs. Trinidad, 400 and I think 19 or there about for nine wickets. So it was an inconclusive game and they were arguing on the basis that they finished higher in the preliminaries, therefore they should advance. Well, Madam Justice says there's no basis for it and she dismissed the case in Port of Spain. So the Jamaicans are taking on combined colleges today in Bridgetown, Barbados. In terms of the English Football League, well, tomorrow Premier League games will continue. Manchester United this week beat um, their arch rivals, Chelsea, but well, that was in the Champions Trophy, the European Champions Trophy. In terms of tennis, well, the action now shifts to clay court tournaments, Italy, France, Germany, and then it's all going to be concluding at Roland Garros in France. And in terms of Grenada, well, Intercall Games concluded yesterday. Hats off to the champions, and what a magnificent group they were. St. David's Catholic Secondary School making it 13 wins in a row, and the St. Andrew Anglican Secondary School retaining the title yesterday, doing so in the final event of the day. And we certainly want to say hats off to the organizers and the games officials. They managed yesterday's event with precision, consistent rain, and yet they were able to succeed in concluding the games before 7 o'clock. And, well, when I drove in town last night, I thought it was well managed too. So it looked like the athletes and the, whoever they were involved in, well, at least they didn't do as they did 10, 12 years ago, which was to dirty up the town. It was pretty organized last night. I would, well, at least when I was there. Okay, this morning we're going to talk a range of issues. We're going to start with a bit of Taekwondo and we're going to get to know a bit of the sport of Taekwondo. We think about karate, which is perhaps well known to many of us. Uh, it's been around in Grenada for quite a while. But the name Taekwondo is certainly a popular sport. It's an Olympic sport and we have one of our people who has done exceedingly well and is hoping to do even better in the months and the years ahead. She's going to be talking to us this morning about her recent success in Argent in Peru and we're going to be joined by police superintendent Jasmine Prince. So I hope you make it this morning Jasmine. Certainly looking forward to have you with us this morning and we're going to talk about motor vehicles and uh, licensing and other things and many of us have been, well not me for sure, I've paid my license, paid my insurance but some of you have not done any. That will be one of the concerns. And then I'll be joined by Selwyn Strawn, uh, support for Libya. <laughs> we we'll certainly try to make sense out of it this morning. And towards the end of the program, we have activities of the Resource Center for the Blind, two of the wonderful people who find time to work with people who are physically, visually impaired. So pretty interesting program ahead this morning, but let's start by welcoming a very athletic and seemingly <laughs> uh, well-fit Andrea St. Bernard represented Grenada in Taekwondo, did extremely well in Peru, finished, uh, won her contest against an Argentine. Good morning to you. Very good morning to you, Mr. Good to Roberts. see you, good to see you. Always good to see you. Thank All right, you for and me. it seems like uh, when you came here the first time, I suppose there might have been some uncertainty, 
I suppose there, there is now some feeling of what? Euphoria, if I may say so? I would say so, but th uh, there, there are some mixed feelings, but I'm certainly very excited about the uh, progress and the accomplishments that I've made thus far. Good. Yeah. And Andrea has taken leave from her private practice. She's an attorney to focus on getting herself ready for the Pan American Games as the first step, the World Championship. And, well, let's be optimistic, qualifying for the 2012 London Olympic Games, and that's a real possibility. Well, give maybe, let's start by maybe introducing us to Taekwondo. I certainly know what is karate. I did it for a little while, but I thought it was too disciplined, too rough. <laughs> Not really rough, but too demanding, so I, I, I really didn't stay very long. But Taekwondo, I think you have a video with us this morning. So for those of us who don't know what is Taekwondo, maybe you can, before we take the video, give us a definition and explanation. What is this for? Okay, Taekwondo is uh, a Korean martial art. Um, the actual word Taekwondo means the way of the hand and the foot. So it's a striking sport, um, primarily kicks um, and punches as well, but it's uh, the, the rules of the game are that you can kick to the body, you can kick to the head, you may punch to the body, but you can't punch the head. So it's much easier to score a point with kicking and it, it, the result is that you'll see much more kicking in the sport. Um, Taekwondo became, uh, officially became an Olympic sport in uh, Sydney. Um, it is currently practiced in 190 countries by over 70 million people. Because it is recently uh, added as an Olympic sport, it actually replaced karate as an Olympic sport. So many people had grown up knowing more about karate. Well, Taekwondo is the new martial art of the day. So um, there, there's been quite a movement to the development of Taekwondo throughout the world and a very focused effort to develop Taekwondo in the Caribbean nation uh, region. Right, so we see a bit of the action there. So what you're seeing is mm -hmm. um, just a few highlights of my own competition. So which one is you? Uh, everyone that, that wins the shot is me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's when a blue and there's a red. The, right, and so in, the, in this... Uh, you the red. I'm in red. I thought so. Argentina's in blue. So right. this is uh, a bit of the qualification event that I just came from in Peru, uh, Lima, Peru where um, athletes were competing to qualify to participate in the 2011 Pan Am Games, which will be held in October this year in uh, Guadalajara, Mexico. So the, um, we only fought to m determine the top eight spots. So my win against Argentina put me in the top eight and we no, called Grenada it a there. Grenada three, Argentina zero. That's right, that's right. The final score was uh, 10 to four. So there's a, a bit of an explanation. You can see Taekwondo has three two minute rounds. So we're now entering round three and the score I believe is eight, eight to three in, in that round. Um, you score one point for a shot to the body. You score three points for a regular shot to the head. And then there are some um, special techniques that can earn you additional points. A spinning technique to the head will earn you four points. A spinning technique to the body will earn you two points. So it is quite a technical sport. Um, but it, it's very interesting, it's a lot of fun, and I have to admit there is quite a bit of discipline in it as well, so um, that, that part is very similar to the other martial arts. But well, you had to be fit. You definitely do. There's a lot of do. energy exerting. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of energy being exerted and getting the feet so high. Yes, uh, flexibility, fitness, all very important. It's amazing how uh, one fight, three rounds, two minutes, mm -hmm. requires hours of training and practice every day. And uh, you can spend two hours training intense, top, um, top notches as, as hard as you can go, and you can barely match the intensity of those three rounds when you actually get in the ring. So it's, um, it's an exhilarating sport. It's a challenging sport. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. <laughs> well, you are. Yeah. Uh, protective gears. Yes. Uh, so your head is protected. Yes. So protective gear we wear starting from the bottom. Mm -hmm. The s recently the uh, World Taekwondo Federation has implemented electronic scoring. So with most of the electronic scoring systems, you'll wear socks that have sensor sensors in them. Um, this makes the game a little bit more objective. So it uh, requires a 
shot to the body that has a, a, st a standard of force mm -hmm. um, necessary to create the point. So oftentimes when you're fighting, you'll see that you've made contact with the body because the score will flash, but it won't have the, the necessary um, impact to create a, a point. So we wear socks that have this electronic um, technology in, in them that matches with the um, hogos. We also wear shin guards to cover our shins. We wear a groin cup, mm -hmm. men and, and women. We wear what's called a hogo, and that's uh, the body protection that you see, either red or blue. Um, arm guards that just cover from your wrist to, to your elbow. It's mainly where you're blocking. Uh, a mouth guard because kicks to the head are totally legal, accepted, and, and that's what we're going for. Um, and a headgear. So you will see blood occasionally in Taekwondo. Um, you will see a knockout. That's one of the um, most sought after ways to end a fight. Um, um, but that, that's that's what the um, that's what the gears that's what the gears there for. It's very, it's a man in the art actually. Pardon me. <laughs> it's a woman in the art. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for the faint of heart. Yes. That's correct. I yes. would think so. <laughs> uh, similar to amateur boxing, where there's all these little. Yes. gadgets so the the punch is recorded in the your case the kick is recorded mm -hmm. yeah and then you say there's a little blood have you spilled blood yet? i in more in training uh oh. in competition um i've been fortunate never to to be the recipient of a, a hard blow to the head okay. or um and i've never suffered any major injuries in competition oh. um like i said before training requires many hours a day and it's much more typical that uh, that type of injury occurs in in uh, in training right. so and then it's categorized you are in what category yes. what weight category you would be i'm my weight category is under 67 kilograms okay. so that would be sort of in boxing that would be light like welterweight around there. welterweight is right. what what yeah. it is in taekwondo okay. so light welter um, okay you like that yeah light <laughs> that's welter. my favorite area <laughs> i remember sugary and I'm not taking it away from women now, I just remember Sheree was that area. Right. And he was, well, as everybody knows, he was the world champion, maybe the most liked boxer for a while. But what would have inspired you? And I'm going to get to some of the other areas in a moment. But for women who are looking at this thing, and normally we would say, in the Caribbean in particular, athletics, netball, non contact sports for females. What would have inspired Andrea to say, look, let me get involved in this, uh, you know, and take it to the point where you want to get to the Olympics? Mm -hmm. uh, my, my personal experience with Taekwondo is uh, a little different from the typical experience. I've been an athlete my entire life. I okay. did my university degree on a volleyball scholarship in the States. Okay. So I've done my share of oh. non-contact <laughs> competitive sport um, and I quite enjoy many different sports. Um, I've always had um, a bit of an affection for the martial arts, mm. maybe because of the discipline, but also because of um, the opportunity to learn self-defense, um, the opportunity to learn more about your own body and your own the way that your body moves and the way that your body interacts with other people. Um, that in particular is what I think is appealing and should be appealing to many women because there is quite um, a strong self-defense component to Taekwondo. So um, in that regard, I think it, it's something that many women should be interested in and should, should pursue. Um, there's something to knowing what it feels like to strike, whether it's a target or another person <laughs> that, that's up to the individual. And not, not everybody joins Taekwondo to compete and there are many benefits to Taekwondo um, that can be had without getting into uh, the actual sport of, of Taekwondo. Of course, similar to karate, there are um, what we call pumse in karate, it's called katas. So those are choreographed movements um, series, a series of choreographed movements that are required for individuals to go through their grading. And those movements um, are, are, they simulate self-defense techniques. There are also um, a wide range of self-defense techniques that are in fact a requirement of the Taekwondo syllabus. So there are, there are many aspects to Taekwondo in addition to the sport, which is where um, my heart lies, that are quite appealing to men, women, children. Um, ultimately, I think for me, it, it gives me a, a much better understanding of myself, my body, how it moves, and I'm, I'm constantly working to 
gain in that understanding. So you got a massive kick to the face a while ago. I did. That yeah. was my <laughs> favorite shot. That's a, a, a shot that I'm quite, mm -hmm. um, I, I do quite often. It's a bit of a trademark for me, that front leg to the face. It's called an appal, and okay. it's a, an a defensive technique, okay. yes. Say the word again. Appal. Appal. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned it. <laughs> I'm not sure if my Korean master would agree with my pronunciation, but yes, for All our right. purposes, it's called right. an appal. I don't think there are many Koreans <laughs> in Korea, so they wouldn't know. <laughs> right. So, next step now is step what? You have gotten to this stage. So your next move? Well, um, I wish I had more clarity on that mm -hmm. on that point. Um, what's unfortunate is I've had many successes. So earlier this year was Caribbean Championships, and that was um, easily won. Um, and then came this Pan Am Games qualification. This is the first Pan Am Games qualification I've been to. I'm very happy to have qualified, so this will be the first Pan Am Games that I'm uh, participating in. The, what I find exhilarating about Pan Am Games is it is, it is a multi-sport um, competition. So I'll meaning actually, athletics. meaning all the other sports, sports right. that the Olympic Committee supports yeah. or all the other athletes yeah. who have qualified to go to the Pan Am Games will be a part of the same team mm -hmm. um, going to Guadalajara, Mexico. So I'm really excited to finally be a part of Team Grenada in, okay. a, in a broader sense. Um, and that, and I'm, uh, that's excellent. I'm very excited about that. The unfortunate part is there are um, other major events that I would have hoped to have been able to participate in, but for which I've been denied participation, um, wh which is very unfortunate. Um, the association, the Taekwondo Association, has not been um, as supportive as I would have liked for them to be. Um, and on the heels of a great performance in Peru, um, I had hoped that they would have registered me to participate in the World Championships, which are early May in Korea, um, but without really any explanation, I was informed very recently that I've just not been registered and won't be able to participate. So that's very disappointing. Um, I think I had both a good chance to place and perform at World Championships. Um, as you know, there, it's also an, an amazing opportunity. Um, it's necessary to continue to compete in preparation for the games that are coming up. And possibly most important, it's a world ranking competition. So uh, Taekwondo, the World Taekwondo Federation has a world ranking system. And the primary purpose for the world ranking system is to seed athletes at the Olympic qualification events. Unfortunately, um, due to difficulties with the association that I've had, I've not been able to attend um, most of the ranking games through 2010 and now apparently 2011 as well. And the result is that when I once was ranked in the top 20 in the world, I've now dropped into the 70s just as a result of not having been able to access the competitions that would have given me the points necessary to, to be ranked. The result of that is when I do get to the Olympic qualifiers, and even that I have to keep my fingers crossed. I've got no real assurance that the association will do what's necessary to uh, register me for the upcoming qualification games, which is obviously very concerning to me. Um, but if all things go well and I do uh, end up being registered, at best um, my seating will be at the very bottom. So the result again will be that I will uh, end up being placed against people at the top of the ranking um, system in the, in the early rounds of the qualification. There's a reason there's, a, there's seating and uh, it obviously gives advantage to those that are seated at the top and I think that my current uh, athlete ranking is not representative of my ability and it means that I will very likely face um, a very difficult competition uh, early, early in the qualification events. Well, I'm confident that you will get to the Pan American Games. It's unfortunate you're not at the World Games and I know the Olympic Association because from a sports journalist perspective we have talk to the Olympic Committee and I, I know that they are arranging a meeting with the parties concerned because clearly this is just not one athlete, this is Grenada and you would have seen her contest on the screen there a while so clearly you could judge for yourself and it would be, let me put it this way, something that we can't pay for if she was to do well and win or get into the Olympics, the publicity would be tremendous so clearly it is something that all Grenada, Caracol and Pidi Martinique we must be supportive of and 
I'm sure Vida Bruno, General Secretary and President Lahi will meet with the representative of the local association and get it right. So I'm confident that that will occur. It's unfortunate that you're not in Korea for the World Championship, but I'm sure the other part must be a reality because it's just not association is the country at stake. Right. Well, I'm confident that will happen and keep your finger crossed. <laughs> so um, I suppose you have to get to a schedule now because Pan American Games, Mexico, Guadalajara mm -hmm. in October. Yes. So between now and October, you were in Q Cuba for a while too. I was. Uh, Cuba has become a very integral part of my okay. training regimen. Um, Did they, you just pick Cuba out of the blue? Or? I didn't pick Cuba out of the blue. They mm. they've they actually have um, I guess the the strongest um, program in the in the Caribbean region, okay. um, and. I guess because of their their socialist status, they have athletes on full time training all year round. So it's uh, quite easy for me. And when I say easy, years of relationship have been developed between Cuba and my um, my head coach, Grandmaster Chung. He's been going back and forth to Cuba for more than ten years now, and has developed a relationship with them that allows him to send athletes for for development. Uh, I've been visiting and training with the Cuban national team for five or six years now. Um, so really since the very early days of my uh, Taekwondo career. And the benefit really is that, like I said, they're always there training uh, full time. So um, their senior team, their junior team, their junior team is also um, athletes 17 to 21. So okay. these aren't children. Um, Everybody's very hungry to, to get an opportunity to fight. The senior team has about 20 to 25 females that are training full time, all the time, every day. Mm -hmm. um, they live in the Pan American village. They wake up, they live, eat, breathe, sleep, Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. So when I go to Cuba, it's a real opportunity to test if I'm at that level, if I'm ready to um, compete with other people who are full time Taekwondo athletes. Um, but as you were saying before, it's a, it, there are divisions, categories, and so it, it's best for me to train with other girls who are in my uh, weight division. Um, if I go to Cuba, there's always um, a selection of, of at least five or six girls that are in my division that I can easily spar with, train with, uh, compete with. And so over the years, I've developed a very good relationship with the Cuban team. Um, they've welcomed me with open arms. I'm very grateful to their support, as well as the support of, of other Caribbean um, nations. They've offered quite a bit of support. But Cuba um, has been a huge part of my training regimen. So, for example, before I went to Peru, I spent two and a half weeks in Cuba uh, training with their team, their delegation on their way to Peru. They qualified um, four female categories, four male categories, so they, they are definitely maintaining their dominance in the region um, and and they're happy to, to help me and um, have taken me in as part of their team as well. So I do hope that between now and um, Guadalajara, the Pan Am Games, I'll have more opportunities to go and train uh, with the Cuban team. Of course, being in Grenada um, is a big challenge for my training schedule. I don't have the same type of um, training environment. I don't have other um, experienced fighters that I can that can help me train or that um, can spar with me and that sort of thing. So I keep up with um, as much physical activity as I can. I've uh, set up a little gym in my house with a kicking bag and so I do as much as I can on my own. Um, I have a few people that, that do lend their lend a hand every now and then but it's just not the same as going and being with uh, a full team, uh, a full program. Good. Well I suppose uh, it should be known too that much of your participation is at your own cost. Absolutely. Uh, right. that, that, that also has been the truth um, for the past four years that I've been representing Grenada. Um, unfortunately, I, there has been no assistance um, for me to do that. My dream has been big enough and I've been fortunate enough to be able to um, continue to fund my dream. But uh, the reality is having taken the time, which I think is necessary to be a full-time athlete at this critical stage yeah. of the uh, Olympic cycle, um, my resources obviously are depleting. Again, 
I have to say I'm a little disappointed and concerned that the association hasn't offered assistance that I know is available. And that's through the International Federation? Through the International Federation. Yeah. So uh, obviously it's understandable that um, small countries don't, don't have the resources that other countries do, but because of that reality, um, the World Taekwondo Federation has created um, a reform fund and, and other um, resources that, that are available to athletes such as myself that um, don't have support um, who are attempting to compete for their country. But for some reason the association again has chosen not to access that support for me and so uh, it means again I have a lot less opportunities to compete um, and everything that I do do is at, is at my own expense. I'm sure we we'll get some part to a part of uh, balance, equilibrium I'm sure will exist Maybe not now, but I'm sure clearly your work has distinguished you and I'm sure all Grenadians are proud of the efforts that you have made and would want to wish you well. Thank and you. I would hope that in the not too distant future, the path would be as smooth as possible. Uh, well, in the coming weeks, not future that too long. Uh, the future may take 20 years away. <laughs> but um, Andre, it's good to have you this morning. I, so you're going to spend how long here again? Next two weeks and you're going to go on? Or? Uh, I will be, I'll be mm. here more, more often than not. Um, I'll be back to Toronto also, that's okay. another part of my training regimen, right. so I'll go to Toronto um, to do some training with my coaches there, but mm, I'm stationed in, in Grenada now, so you can expect me here more often than not. Um, one thing I, I'll mention quickly is you had asked, last time I was on the show, what's the plan to develop, you know, Grenada Taekwondo mm. in general, and I'll say, um, in you know in connection with what we were saying about the resources being available to myself the hope is that by accessing whatever resources are available to for myself those same resources will be available to athletes that follow hopefully um, in my footsteps which is ultimately uh, among amongst my goals um, what I would like to do to help introduce uh, Taekwondo to Grenada is hold a, a series of, of Taekwondo WTF sparring Taekwondo seminars, which I'll be offering through the month of May. Mm -hmm. um, it's a four-part series, so it'll be every Saturday night from 5.30 to 7.30. Um, and I'm asking people to pay $20 for the entire series, which really just goes to cover the cost of the facility that, that we'll be doing it in. So really the idea is to introduce people to the sport, give them an idea about what WTF sparring is, and give them a chance to decide if this is something that they enjoy and that they like to do, um, and, and hopefully gain some interest in the, in the sport at the same time. And that's people of all ages? People of all ages. Um, th this seminar in particular will focus on people who are um, 14 and older, okay. 12, 12 to 14 and over. Right. Um, the, I, I also teach at um, the Dario Institute, which is a Taekwondo uh, dojang, and we primarily teach, um, at this point in time, most of our students are between 7 and 12. So I do my fair share of, um, of the peewee division. Um, we had a little competition with those kids just uh, this week actually and I was quite impressed to see how well they're coming along with the Taekwondo curriculum. So I'll, in, in that regard I'll be adding um, an additional sparring component to their class but I also wanted to take a chance to get some of the older um, youth as well as young adults and older adults as well. All right, so if you're brave and <laughs> you are those, you're one of those who can stand up to the rigors of it. But let's take a final look at Andrea before we wish her good luck again. And I'm sure that other young ladies, maybe elder ones, Hazel does a little bit of it. Hazel does. Hazel uh, uh, Dabrio uh, is a second uh, degree black belt as uh, well. So. Uh, and she's not 15. <laughs> <laughs> so. How many women in all participated in this event? Um, a lot. A I, lot. I don't right. have a number, but right. definitely every division was full. Okay. Um, it's a sport that, that has had high participation from women. Um, it's definitely an upcoming emerging sport. There, there is not a lack of, of um, 
women, the division is always full. Right, give us a sense of what you're doing there, you know, here you're dancing in, in the Red House. Well, uh, so much of Taekwondo is really about timing and distance, that when you see us bouncing around, it's really to um, time the movements of your opponent and to get the the proper distance to make your attack. Um, the blue area of the mat is the area that you're allowed to stay in. If the if uh, an athlete takes two steps outside of the blue area, so two feet in the red area, that's um, a kyungo, which is a warning. And two kyungos will give your opponent a point. So that again becomes part of the strategy of the competition. You're constantly trying to drive them back into the corner, both because it'll limit their options and also because it, it gives you the opportunity to gain half a point, essentially. Yeah. Um, so, so what you're seeing is basically athletes that are waiting and trying to size each other up and determine who's going to kick first. And when you do kick, um, you want to be able to defend yourself, to answer your opponent's kick, and, and you want to get the, um, the, the up on each exchange. Right. Well, I call you the Muhammad Ali. <laughs> 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 Doesn't touch your face at all. <laughs> Andre, what a pleasure it was to be with you. Good morning. Thank and you very much. Thanks for, for coming me. and wishing you well again and hope that the part that is rough will soon be smooth and you will certainly realize your dream of getting to London and I'm sure making us proud. Thank you very much. Good I will you. continue the fight. Great. God bless. Well, it's 27 minutes. No, it's 23 minutes to the hour of 8. This is Spice Morning for April the 8th. We're going to take a break and we're going to have much more with you. If you're visiting us, we certainly want to welcome you to Grenada. Hope you've been enjoying it thus far. And you will take back great memories to wherever you come from. Let's have a break. We'll be back. Carry Kumaloon Make sure you come and down to see, to see, to see, to see There is a big chance to live a new life Come to Carry Kumaroon and String Band Music Festival April 29th to May 1st, 2011 Eat the smoke food of our ancestors Drums will spit, sweet strings will captivate It's a unique festival of the people Filled with authentic cultural education And pure entertainment for the whole family Living will not be the same after this massive life-changing festival Make your reservations now, call 473-443-7948 or visit our website www.karikumaroon.com Karikumaroon, make sure you come and down to see The Sweet Sound of Steel returns to the Carinage Pedestrian Plaza, Sunday, April 10th as the Ministry of Culture begins the first in a series of Paris Steel Band Concerts for 2011. Yes, the pedestrian plaza will be transformed into a musical frenzy as six of Grenada's top steel bands showcases their musical arrangements and creative talent. This concert will feature Panorama Champions, Cuyaba New Dimension, Bomb Tune Champions, Republic Bank Angel Harps, the Rainbow City All-Stars, Grand Roy Pan Angels, and the Digicel Florida All-Stars. Featured schools, St. George's Anglican Senior and 3 Hours Private. All the action starts at 5 p.m. sharp. It's organized by the Ministry of Culture to promote greater awareness and appreciation of steel band music. Remember the date, Sunday, April 10th. The Carinage Pedestrian Plaza, sweet pan music will fill the air. Don't you miss it. All right, it's 20 minutes to the hour, and it's a beautiful morning so far, I would say. Well, I hope you enjoy it, if you're having breakfast at this time. Uh, some people enjoy coffee, some tea, and, well, I like bush tea, as I say sometimes, mm -hmm. black stage tea. They're not very prevalent anymore, the bush seems to have disappeared, houses have taken up many of the areas. But I'm sure around the country you can find some black stage. Good morning to you, Selvin. Good morning, Ray. Uh, and thank you for you. having me here this morning. All right, Selvin, Sean, good morning and great to see you. Um, you, you what sort of tea you drink in the morning? Coffee? Um, coffee? No, no, no. I don't drink coffee at all. You don't drink, I, I myself. I, I like use herb, herbal tea. Herbal tea. And um, followed by a, a blend of oats and nuts okay. and this sort of thing, you know. <laughs> I try to stick to um, 
You rigid at that? Precisely, you know, I have a, a rigid diet regime. Okay. You okay. know, I, I follow some of the basic principles. Mm. I don't eat um, um, all sorts of things. I make sure I select my foods properly. Okay. Not only do I eat, try to eat the proper foods, mm -hmm. But I try to eat the, the foods in proper combination, okay. because that is important for, you know, uh, um, assimilation, right. absorption, digestion, and elimination. Right? If you mix so up you're a dietitian, though. No, I'm not a dietitian. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, it's important um, to, to 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 listen to what people have to say, right? right. right? Because I, I listen to a lot um, of what. Patrick Dells. Okay. You listen to yeah. Patrick Dells. <laughs> Patrick will be laughing <laughs> yeah. you know, at me now. <laughs> right, 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 right. And I mean, I think uh, more and more of the population should really pay attention to, to many of the things that he has been saying. You because serious? I think so. I think Absolutely. so. I mean, and that. I wouldn't um, say more. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, um, if, if um, some of the things that he talks about. Uh -huh are implemented in, in one's life, mm. we will avoid a lot of the illnesses that we're experiencing okay. today and so forth, you know. Mm. Because, you know, you know, um, an important diet regime coupled with a good exercise program right. will ensure that, I mean, you live a healthy life. And you and Silo was a decent medium piece, eh? He's called you Breeze? Yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> called me Breeze. <laughs> so I'm bad, eh? <laughs> right, yeah. He's, he's, he's I, a cheat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good to have you, Selwyn. Yeah, well, nice to be here. Selwyn, it, it's it's... Let me put it this way. The Libya issue and your father, you, you were on top of the wall of issues, he follows right. just about everything, but he was one of the people who, together with, um, well, I suppose, Chester, who publicly talked about supporting Libya and the issues that are on. Um, I suppose you guys would have had a rationale for that. Yeah, sure, because um, Libya, of course, is a, a third world country, right? Um, Libya is part of North, Amer North Africa and so on. And um, Libya has been helping third world countries in Africa and in the Caribbean and other parts of the world. So it, it, uh, Libya has not been using its oil resources just to develop its own country and um, just focus on its people and so forth. While it is modernizing, while it is libera liberalizing its economy, it is also helping um, countries like ours. And we here in Grenada, I mean, the new generation may not know of that, but we here in Grenada benefited enormously from Libya during the revolution. In fact, I have personal experience, right? I, I traveled to Libya um, in the very early period of the revolution. For so you some, met the colonel? Of course, I met Colonel Gaddafi on two occasions, right? Uh, when I went to Libya on the first occasion, I did not meet with him. I met with his number two man, mm. Major Jaloud, mm. right? And we discussed... Um, the, 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 the implications of, um, you know, of, of um, a number of things and so forth. And um, my mission there was to try and establish diplomatic relations with Libya uh, for the first time between Grenada and um, Libya. Having met the colonel twice, some people know, think he is, let me put it like eccentric. Well, that was not my impression of him. Um, my impression of him when I met him on the two occasions, because I met him in the company of Prime Minister Morris Bishop. Mm -hmm. We traveled to Libya um, in 1980 and in 1981. I went there in June of 1979. I didn't meet him on that occasion. But when I traveled with um, Prime Minister Bishop, subsequently, uh, we met him both in Tripoli and in Benghazi. And um, my impression of him is, is that he was a very deep thinker. He's always thinking, right? And he was able to come up with his um, theory of, um, of, of the world, right? Okay. And of um, how Libya, in fact, should be developed in particular. He, in fact, um, in his green book, you might have heard of, espoused mm -hmm. the, 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 what he called the third international theory, right? He, um, he did not believe in party politics, and I think he still does, right? Because one of the slogans in his, um, his green book um, states that um, representation is falsification. Say that again? Representation is falsification. Falsification. That was a major slogan in his little green book that is about this um, in length mm -hmm. and so forth. But it has some pointed, pointed um, slogans there and, and positions as far as he's concerned. Okay, you see, Libya is a, a tribal society, right. right? A lot of tribes and so on. And his, his objective was to unify the tribes, okay? And, um, and that is why, in fact, he created a new state right? A new state because he overthrew King Idris in 1969 mm -hmm. on 1st of September. And they, these kings in the past 
thrived on the tribalism of the people. They play one tribe against the other and so forth. So his objective, because as a young revolutionary, when he took up power in 1969... He was, what, 29 or something? He was uh, 29, very young, mm -hmm. right? He and um, some other army officers, young revolutionaries, and they were brave enough to move on King Idris at the time, who had a powerful um, army there. And um, part of his whole um, um, ob ob objective was to create a new kind of state, right? Because he, he discussed that at length with um, Prime Minister Bishop and myself, right, uh, in, in both those meetings. And um, they, in fact, decided to call Libya, um, eventually, the Libyan Arab Socialist Jamaharia, all right? One might ask the question, what does Jamaharia, Jamaharia mean, mm -hmm. right? It, simply, it means state of the masses, right? state of the people, and it was bringing the people together, right? And this was, in fact, based on the conflicts that existed uh, among the tribes over the centuries and so on. And um, therefore, it was his objective to, first of all, bring the people together and use the resources of the country, the oil resources in particular, to modernize and liberalize the economy. And that's what he was doing. You think people, he's misunderstood? If the people? You think Gaddafi is misunderstood? I think he's misunderstood by quite a few people, right? Mm. Quite a few people because he has been um, and demonized in many respects. And obviously he was into some things that were not palatable mm. over the years. I mean, one must admit that. But, um, you know, the, the same powers mm. that are now invading his country, right, up to recently were in fact in close um, contact with him, right? They were in collaboration on many fronts. Right, um, take for example, the, um, he was able, right, the, under the Bush administration, right, he renounced um, the, 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 his nuclear. Um, nuclear program, mm -hmm. okay? He, in fact, also renounced terrorism, right, because he was into some of that. He, in fact, paid compensation the for the Lockerbie the bombing mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, the British government, right, was able to sell over a hundred million dollars worth of arms to Gaddafi, right? Prime Minister Blair visited Libya. Condoleezza Rice from the United States visited Libya and held talks and so forth. So in other words, they assisted in um, reconstructing the image of Colonel Gaddafi, the image of terrorism, which he had in fact developed over the period, according to them. And um, in fact, the, the international pressure has stated that Kamis Gaddafi, one of his sons, was in the United States, right, up to when the internal crisis begun. He was invited there by the State Department and he was visiting a number of sensitive areas in the United States. As a matter of fact, when the crisis actually started, he had to hurry out, he had to hurry out of um, the United States to go back to Libya to, to assist his father, etc., etc. So in other words, what I'm saying is that we, there again we have the inconsistency, right? And um, to some extent, the hypocrisy. Um, Last month, in fact, you were saying that the government was a legitimate government, right? This month, you're saying the government is illegitimate, and Colonel Gaddafi has to go. And has so he outlived his usefulness? Well, um, I would say, to some extent, yes. In other words, I would not come here and defend um, his position of being in power for 42 years and want to continue, mm -hmm. right? But at the same time, I would not support any military action to remove him. That is a matter for the Libyan people. Yeah. and um, those who are with him and so forth. Because I think, I mean, 42 years, I mean, that's a real long time. What do you make of the world now? Um, we've been here for a while. We have seen the 79 era, mm -hmm. the Iran, um, Central America. What do you make of the world now? I mean, well, it's not long ago that yeah. it seems to have this, if not balance. Precisely. Uh, I mean, you make the, the things, things, have, things have changed. Um, capitalism is in crisis. Mm -hmm. Capitalism is in crisis, I mean, on all fronts. And, um, you know, um, sometimes one has to go back to look at um, the theories and the positions that were espoused by great philosophers of the past, right? But do you think socialism has a return? Um, because well, that too seems to have fallen well, right away. That you right? cannot stop the march of history. Mm -hmm. What we've well, we have seen as setbacks and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. But um, based on my understanding of how society has been developing over the centuries, Right, I, I, um, I wouldn't say that um, socialism will, will become a factor in our, pe in our time, mm -hmm. but I would not rule out something of the sort taking place down the line, right? Because 
um, conditions, of course, must exist for that to happen. But then, again, Selvin, to me, uh, maybe we're getting old, that's a different, right. we have a different perspective. But are there thinkers? Are, are, are there great thinkers? Are you seeing thinkers? I don't want to call names, but clearly, to me, even in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. the Black Poor era, you had um, people giving the new philosophy of the direction in which you think the region should go. Um, on the international scene, there comes Gorbachev and others. Uh, you're getting a sense that we short of, I would say, real smart people. Yes, there is a there is a there is a shortage of that. But you see, um, uh, Ray, what the point I like to make here, even though there's a shortage of um, deep thinkers as we used to have in the past, mm -hmm. in a sense, we do not have to go and um, reinvent the wheel. No, mm -hmm. right? As uh, it was said by one of the great philosophers of the past, right? Um, that he said over and over. Philosophers have analyzed the world, right? We know what we have to do, right? The important thing now is to change it. In fact, to put it in a new direction. You don't have to go and um, try to determine what needs to be done, right? These things are there, right? The, 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 the positions taken and the philosophical positions taken by these people are there. We can probably look at them and try to see how we can apply them creatively and so forth. So it is not a question of having to go back now and um, think about what can be done to in fact, um, you know, bring benefits to the people of the world, the masses, because in the final analysis, that is what everybody wants to do, right? Um, create a better life for uh, the people in, in the respective countries and so forth. Um, some people feel that it can be done by um, the capitalist model of development. Others feel that you have to take a different path of development. Like we, in fact, adopted a different path. We were not um, um, building socialism as such, but we were on a socialist-oriented path during the revolution. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason we implemented these programs. So like, for example, the, 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 the state sector and the economy that we, uh, we built and so forth was designed, in fact, to bring more and more benefits to the people. And it's, we started in that process without ignoring the important role that other sectors of the economy could play and all of that. So the, the, the question is that, um, um, yes, I agree with you that um, the thinkers are not there as the past. But at the same time, if we are smart, right, if we are smart, we can use um, um, the, 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 the important positions that were developed over time okay. by great people to, in fact, apply to the new situation. But again, uh, again, we seem to be obsessed with materialism, acquisition of wealth. Yeah. You turn on to the TV. I mean, our own thing here, I mean, the bingo is the biggest crowd. I mean, you call right. an intellectual discourse, 50 of the same people turn up. Right. You call some kind of, you know, to me, we, there's a thirst for casino, even though they, we have seen the, 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 the research that it's prostitution, cells, and dehumanizing of the human population, crime and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, so. How, we hope, how are we going to get out of the malaise that we are, you know, society? But, uh, the, and, and that is not just Grenada, that's the problem. It's the not Grenada, it is the Caribbean, it's mm -hmm. worldwide. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's a very important point you're raising there. How do we get out of this situation? Because, um, you know, it has, uh, materialism has taken sway and so forth. In fact, I am, I, uh, one of the things I, uh, I, um, I, I have confronted since my release from prison, right, is that the patriotism in Grenada right, has taken a serious dip, okay? And that, I, I think materialism has contributed to that. In other words, one of the sad things that I have observed is that our youth in particular, right, um, they are, are not prepared to engage, to engage in anything that will um, bring benefits to the country as a whole. In other words, if I'm, to, if I'm to do something, I must be given something in return, right? That to me was very striking, unlike what used to happen yeah. in the past, mm -hmm. right? People were willing to come forward and, I mean, you know, clean the drains, uh, repair the pipes in the different uh, villages and so forth. They don't look back. I mean, you, you have um, a, a social drink afterwards and you talk and you come back another day, as the case may be, mm -hmm. right? This is not happening. If you want to distribute a pamphlet now, a very, and a very important <laughs> issue, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. the brethren will say, well, I mean, what are I getting in return for that? <laughs> I ain't going to do that. I mean, I, I have the personal experience, right? Yeah. I mean, people were willing to come forward in the past and say, listen, give me 100 pamphlets, let me go and distribute, or 100 people and so on, because this is important, mm -hmm. as the case may be. 
But um, that to me is um, sadly lacking. Yeah. And um, I, I, I put that down to the, the, to the, um, to the, the, the dip in patriotism you know, uh, among our people. And we have to find a way to bring that back. Now, this, this raises the whole question of leadership and leadership at all levels of the society. We have to devise program, right? We have to devise program because other things will happen. But we have to learn to compete, competition in all ways, right? If there's a lot of bingo, there's a lot of this, a lot of that, all right, fine. But what can we do, in fact, right, to compete with that in terms of raising the consciousness of the people? Things can be done. We just have to sit down and draw on the experiences of the past, look at what people did and so forth, and try to creatively apply these things to the present. I it's going to take a while, right? I agree with you. But it's a struggle, right. right? If you are prepared to struggle and so on, I mean, initially, just a few people might listen to you. But once you are persistent, once you are persistent, you're going to get people following you. I mean, um, you know, as time goes by, as the case may be. But we need to start. We need to start, right? I mean, in my own kind of way, I've been talking to people and I, I've been expressing my viewpoint. I mean, in different parts of the country, wherever I go, mm -hmm. and I've been making observation on when people raised all kinds of issues and so forth. And I said, well, no, that is unfair. I mean, look at what has happened here. Look at what has happened there and so forth. And let us, in fact, be much more rational. Do not th take what you hear people say, right? Because people deliberately spin and distort issues, right? Put on your thinking cap and so on. And I find it amazing. People then begin to listen, right? Engagement is very important. Engage the people. Listen to the criticism, um, you know? Try to understand why they're criticizing. And if you are in a better position to impart your knowledge and to give them some guidance, then do it. Right? You don't have to be in government to do that. Right? Okay. Of course, government must give, set the example and create a basis and so forth. But you don't have to wait for government people to come out and do that. You who have the knowledge and understand what's happening in a society, understand what is happening in the world. Right? It is your duty, your patriotic duty, I would say, to in fact assist those who are, are not fully there and fully appreciate and understand what is happening around them, and so forth. And I want to just go back to the Libya. You, since you made a comment on Radio T TV, uh, what's the reaction you get from, well, we know this usual suspect like Chester would obviously, uh, for yeah. Johnny Fleck, but the point I'm making, the new, new generation, what people think about that? Well, I, I, I find it um, very interesting because only mm. yesterday morning, in fact, I was mm. driving down to work and uh, I stopped at a, at a shop for a while to, um, to, to, to pass on a message to somebody, and a guy was passing. He runs a boat and said, I say, Brother Strong, now, Comrade Strong, I saw you on the TV talking about Libya and so on, man. Say, right, I support that. Right, this is very good. I mean, people must know that um, Libya is, 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 a, is a total country, and Libya helped us. Now, that's the point that struck him, right? Libya helped us, right, uh, in our time, and helped us, in fact, with um, loans, soft loans, and grants, because I made that point. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used that money, most of it, to help in the construction of the international airport, an airport which is bringing enormous benefits to the society today, right? So he was, he was overjoyed, and I picked that up from a number of people okay. and so on. So you don't think that kind of solidarity is dead? No, 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 it is not dead at all, all right. and especially when you, when you put it in, in practical terms, because quite apart from li what they have done for us, right, uh, we must bear in mind that um, after the invasion in 1983, the, 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 the person, there was a lull in the, in, in the loan repayment to Libya, mm -hmm. right? And then, of course, the government at the time, the NNP government through um, Anthony Boson, um, negotiated a loan, uh, rescheduled loan repayments, mm -hmm. right? The, the Libyan government was prepared to accommodate that. And then subsequently, of course, we were able to get a debt forgiveness organized by the, um, discussed and negotiated by the then Foreign Minister, uh, Honorable Peter David. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, in a sense, right? Um, so at the end of the day, we got a grant. So your, your thing is gratitude? Of course. Oh, right. A major part of it, apart from the principal position, right? right? Um, the gratitude is also important. Because, because I'm taking a principal position as well as saying, you know, look, um, we have to be in solidarity with, with Libya because Libya, in fact, came to our assistance at a particular period in our political history. Right? And that's well, at important. least you're brave enough to make your position clear. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, I think it's important to do I, that. No, I think it's good that people right. talk and people, because, you know, I was listening to Governor Ventura. Okay. Um, Missouri, former Governor Ventura, and he was saying, you know, uh, basically, well, not both to the effect that Gaddafi is relevant, but clearly he, he argues that they've been treated unfairly. Yeah, absolutely. So it was a nice discussion on Piers Morgan. So right. I, you know. And I, I think, um, sorry, I think it's important to continue to call for the ceasefire. 
right? I mean, by all concerns, um, the, the Allied forces, the rebels, as well as the, the Gaddafi armed government. A ceasefire, and let us all go back to the diplomatic table and try to resolve this issue peacefully. Yeah, the world well. needs that. Right. Hello, good to see you. Do you right. still follow cricket? Of course, of course I do. You have feet in the West Indies? Well, yeah, I cannot. I, I mean, I'm backing it. them, but I mean, I, I, yeah, I am not going to put have, my... You have to keep the faith. You have to keep the faith. Well, I'm keeping it, but and, um, uh, you have a nice playing feeling over now. Yes, I know. Far uh, superior to when we... Fan, uh, when we were, used yeah, to be there. That's correct. It is, it, is a, it is a national ground now. You that's can correct. have, um, yeah, you know, um, yeah. regional cricket and so on. Yeah, yeah I love fantastic. it, actually. In yeah, fact, definitely. I saw Hector not too long ago, and I remember Hector right. so open batting for Uber. And yes, yes, him, yes, 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 yes. I saw had, him not too long ago, right, too. Right, if you had this facility then, Man. I'm sure you might have done better, but you might have made West Indies team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, those are some very good days. Yeah, you know? Very, very good days. I, I remember. Like that. And I remember you there, you know, um, really, um, in those days and so on. Okay, you live in Justin Granners there, correct, yeah. up in Woburn there, you uh, know, among yeah. the boys and so on. Okay. You know, um, so I always I used to talk about that, you know, <laughs> when I was up there, right? Because we used to follow you all the time right. on the television, whether right. it was GBN, uh, MTV, and uh, on a TV as a case maybe. And yeah. I always just say, I mean, we <laughs> robbers, I mean, you know, you never get weary. <laughs> <laughs> good so, to have you, Hello. Uh, all right, good man. Good so keep thanks strong, a lot. Man. Man. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, God bless. Yeah, you too. We take a break. We'll be back shortly. Okay. Is each and every Tuesday evening from 8 p.m. Join sports enthusiasts, those who play, organize, and follow the game as they discuss the issues that matter most in sports. Relive the action of sports and give your views. So let's make a beat. Sports Forum on GIS TV each and every Tuesday from 8 p.m. Do you want to further your studies? Expand your options? Then what are you waiting for? Let the scholarship desk help make your dream a reality. The Scholarship Desk, Human Resource Development Division, Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development. Contact them on telephone number 4402737, extensions 7293, 7294 or 7339 or email them at scholarshipdesk at gmail.com. Get your career started today. If you spend two hours in a room where someone's smoking, you'll inhale the equivalent of four cigarettes. My dad shared an office with a chain smoker, eight hours a day, five days a week, for more than 10 years. Not surprisingly, he died of lung cancer. I've had enough of secondhand smoke. Have you? All right, well, we'll be back with you. It's four minutes after the hour, and uh, we still have more to come. Uh, Superintendent Jesmond Prince is here with us. He's going to be with us in the next 15 minutes or so, but we're going to have with us two wonderful people with us, Sherry Hamlet and Jamal Phillip. And good morning. Nice seeing you. Good morning. Good, morning. good, morning. good, good morning. to have you. Mm -hmm. I suppose, Jamal, you're getting up to a wonderful morning. Wester Hall almost won it. Uh, West, Jamal teaches at Westerhall Secondary School. That's just one of the schools I teach. One of the schools. One of the schools. Right, that's correct. <laughs> and um, I suppose you, this one would be close to your heart, Westerhall. Well, of course, because that's a school I went to. All right, yes. all right, all right. Well, certainly, they were impressive yesterday, and they came very close. In fact, for three legs of the relay, they were leading, and SAS overtook them in the, in the um, penultimate one. Well, they're here this morning to talk about activities of the Resource Center for the Blind. And normally we would see Miss Maureen and Miss George, <laughs> but we see new faces this morning. Yes, And yes. it's good to see new faces. <laughs> so, shall we follow athletics? Uh, not You're not very so sportish? Much, no. <laughs> not very sportish. <laughs> no. Jabal, we, we, you have to get a sportish. Well, I mean. <laughs> I mean, even even me for myself, I don't really follow the sports. But Serious, um, but it's just because of of, uh, yeah. of who is involved in sports okay. that would in, that would intrigue me. Great, you know, great. but the actual sporting itself, uh, it doesn't really, you know. Oh boy, another day without yeah. sports. It's a good diet, <laughs> <laughs> Sherry. Believe okay. me. Okay. All right. Well, give me introduce me into the activities of the resource center for the blind. Who's going to start a discussion for me? Uh, well. 
Like you said, we're here to talk about the, the activities of the Resource Centre for the Blind. For those of you who don't know what the Resource Centre for the Blind is or what we do, we're an educational organisation under the Ministry of Education. And what we do is provide the necessary assistance to blind and visually impaired students who are in the mainstream schools mm -hmm. so that they can uh, function at their maximum potential. This involves things as uh, providing brailers to blind students so that they can take their notes or uh, making sure that students who are low vision have large print uh, and so on and so forth. We are located in Pedmata in the School for the Deaf building in St. David's and like I mentioned, uh, well you would have noticed I mentioned some of some tools there Good. that are necessary for blind education but it is not always possible with the funding that we have, with the little funding that we have, to acquire those things. So we find ourselves in a situation where we need to do fundraising to make sure that we have brailers and to make sure that we have the necessary braille paper and so on and so forth. And Mr. Philip is going to go into some of the activities that we, that we make use of to gather that funding. Right, Mr. Philip, yes. Jamal, what are some of the activities? Well, um, <clears throat> we're, we're having this year our annual walk that and, we normally And that's when? Have. And I will be in the May month. The month of that May. That is the month of the disabled. Right, I'm right. very familiar with that month. Yes, yes. Right. And, um, <clears throat> well, this year we're, we're having our walk in basically two parishes here in Grenada. We're having our first walk on the 18th of May in St. George's and um, that walk would be we'll be starting at the Green Bridge onto Grand Bay Street onto Halifax Street onto Young Street and onto the Carnage onto the Tantine Plain Field that's where we stopped Good. all right and on the 25th of May we'll be having the other part of the walk would be in St. Andrews, that's the big parish. Okay. Right? And we'll be starting from Progress Park, going on to Canal Road, onto Victoria Street, onto Bendron Street, onto Chapel Road, onto Seaton Brown, and onto Victoria Park. And then there will be stop. activities. Well, not really. What we would normally have is just refreshments for the kids and everybody would just, um, you know, just enjoy themselves and time to go. But um, our purpose of the walk Tell really me. and truly is to create awareness to the public as it relates to blind and visually impaired people. Right? Um, also, this year, we will be raising funds for Brailers, because we're definitely in a great um, need of brailers for the. So for along the students. walk, you'll be asking people to make donations. Yes, yes, and genuinely. Genuinely. Yes. Good, I quite agree with mm -hmm. you. Because we, our brailers, right now, I mean, most of our, our of our braille machines right now are done, and um, we have students in the secondary and primary schools that make use of the brailers in terms of using it to take their notes and to do their homework and so forth and even the classwork and most of our brailers are done right now based um, due to the wear and tear and the, I mean I guess the lifespan of these brailers is up because we have them a number of years now you know we normally have them being serviced every year a technician from Jamaica would usually come in to service them who would have trained me in that field so I am the technician now <laughs> but <laughs> the the the, um, the brailers actually they actually make their time now. So we're really in need of of, of some. We were so um, fortunate to to um, get some funding from DigiCell to assist with that as well. But we would have only be able to t purchase about two to three brailers with that. We got six thousand three hundred dollars from DigiCell, and. Um, one brailer is basically almost a thousand US or even more, 
you know. So and with all that, brain, right, it's difficult for the visually impaired to do work yes, at yes. school or anything. Yes, mm -hmm. because is there a notebook. There's because a notebook, it's their notebook right, basically. Right. Their writing material, you know. So good. So these two, uh, you call them walks. Yes, right. right. <laughs> the one in Queens started from the Green Bridge in Queens Park mm -hmm. and we ask people to give generously along the route in St George's and in St Andrew. Yes. Uh, are there other activities um, that are particularly associated mm -hmm. with the blind? We're we're actually um, as it relates to fundraising, mm -hmm. we we have we are working on um, placing donation tins okay. into some of the various business places. So far, we have gotten response from um, five business places. That is um, LL Ramdani, um, Purcell, Singer, Home Pride Bakery, Best Fresh Supermarket in Library. And um, the fifth one eludes you. With the mm -hmm. fifth one. Um, You'll find it. Yes, I, I, I'll get it. But we have, a, we have a number of them that um, is... is is willing to, to, to participate in, in, in the acceptance of our um, of, of, of our donation tins. I know they would they would accept, it's just a matter of timing. You know, so people who are <coughs> hearing you this morning, you and Sherry, and wish now to make a donation, uh, better still to donate two or three burlers. Um, mm -hmm. Approximately how many do you need? Well, Basically, um, if we get like 10 to 14 brailers... So we need, you need good. about 10, about 15 yeah. brailers? Yeah, because, because we have um, our secondary school students, blind and visually impaired, who are um, constant users of the brailler, and also the primary school who are um, just intermediate users, they're just starting. We also have... We also would, would need the brailers to, to introduce pre braille skills to our our young students that is in the pre primary school as well. Yeah. Also to to our um students parents. Okay. We want to also have a pre training program. And that's event. a thousand US for one. Basically yeah. Right. About how many people the population of um visually impaired people you have to work with? Students. So it could be uh, students or elderly. Yeah. Well um we have approximately 35 students because we also 35 students yeah in schools in 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 various schools various schools in Grenada yeah. that includes um, the the younger students like um, the um, those within the range of two or three years old we also work with those students as well so you're doing so. an excellent job in uh, that tender age you're beginning to help people well, yes, yes. Right. We're, yeah. we're trying to make sure that we have an early intervention mm -hmm. because this is key when it, when you're mm -hmm. working with blind and visually impaired people. what we're realizing now is that um refining more visually impaired younger ones mm -hmm. within that range of two three years old baby you know and we 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 find that as a um something to look into basically that's why we were in the process of introducing our early intervention program for the kids. I suppose you are an ex both of you are great examples because yeah. in the case of Jamal remember you playing the music <coughs> you still get a chance to play a bit of music mm -hmm. yeah I always play music I, well I mean I'm a computer technician right. in um, what I what I basically teach is computer science okay right right and ever since I'm I mean I'm, I've been loving my music always recording a new hit but well, just that's to correct. get the so that's why we got to know you on the television <laughs> and your mother certainly was uh as sure she still is um, one of the people who stayed very close oh, to yes. you oh yes oh, so yes. um i'm trying to say that you are a great example of what uh, you know the equipment you speak about the braille machine can mm -hmm. do can help someone develop and grow now you a computer yeah. science teacher and i suppose the braille machine would have helped you to grow it would have you see it's all about determination Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, when I when I was when I was going to school, it was much more of a challenge to me and uh, my colleague here, because she is also a past student. Right. Um, West Hall? Oh, no, no, no. no. Right. I mean, we we were we were students that were actually within the program. Okay. You know, even if I I went because part of our aim as a res um, as it relates to the resource center for the blind is to. Um, 
integrate our regular our, our, our um, blind and visually impaired student into the regular school system both primary and secondary that has worked well oh yes yeah, it, it actually has, has. Uh, it, it has, has worked yes. well it wait has. i must say that in many of our schools mm -hmm. I, I for instance we have a student who is at St. Rose Modern Secondary, mm -hmm. one of my students personally that I see. Another one that I'm at the St. Mark's Secondary School. The school, and, and this is something that is so important, the school has been very accommodating, very willing to work along with us because sometimes we need to modify mm -hmm. their, uh, their timetable. Mm -hmm. For instance, a blind or visually impaired student might not do so well in, say, clothing and textiles mm -hmm. as it has to do with you know looking yeah. very closely yeah. and so on and so forth but that is a time slot that can be used for braille skills okay. or for uh, listening skills because all these all these uh, areas need to be sharpened when you already have a visual impairment mm -hmm. so they have been very very accommodating in all the teachers and helping us figure out what the best way is to get these notes to these students uh, Sometimes they might require five minutes more on an exam, on an exam because uh, brailing or so on may take up more time than penning. simply yeah. penning or you know, writing in their own notebooks. Well, let me ask both of you this. Um, we are in a culture where mm -hmm. oftentimes you're very unkind. No That's question true. about it. I mean, mm -hmm. I, had a di I have a disability, so I can speak about it, but I suppose it's more civilized now than it was <laughs> in my era. Um, even your own students can be very unkind and very unsympathetic. Um, what is the atmosphere now? You people go and treat with your clients and so forth. You get the impression that it's a more conscious society that people are people irrespective of their disability. Well, I, I guess I question. guess that would actually um, that would actually uh, depend on the the kind of people we have in our society because I mean. We know that a lot of people here are very ignorant as it relates to, you know, situations like these. I mean, it, it's something that I would have grown to be accustomed with, you know. Well, we all I, have. I, I would not expect to find everybody to be genuine, okay. mm -hmm. you know, and, and somehow, I mean, to me, I don't really feel that that I am the only person that would be prosecuted or mm -hmm. maybe scorned in any way. Right. You don't have to really have a, 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 a impediment or so, such as the case, to be prosecuted or to be filled <laughs> in such a way that, you know, you're not liked, really. Okay. I mean, I, I obviously, I do feel like that sometimes, but in the reality sense of it, you know, that's just how it is. I mean, in, in, in a general term, you don't really have to have any disability to be criticized or so. <laughs> well, um, Sherry? I take on the matter? Mm -hmm. I honestly think most of the time when you find people being that way, it's, like you said, it's, it's a culture of not knowing. It's a culture yeah. of misinformation. Mm -hmm. And that's why we, we make it our duty when we go to the schools, when we go to events, wherever we, we find ourselves, to be advocates because uh, it's not just being advocates for our students that presently but it's, it's being advocates for the students to come and in a way it's being advocates for ourselves mm -hmm. because it's something that we would not have been privileged to you know all that all that awareness all that information uh, Mr. Philip is visually impaired I am visually impaired and I also have the added fact that I am albino so we would have both been you know we would have both been exposed to a lot of people who don't have that kind of information and who are just following the crowd and they're doing what they did what they know is right. done so we, we always try to make sure in the classroom inform the students what's going on do you, you have any questions feel free to come to us you want to know what's wrong why does she need extra time why is it that that she has to sit closer to the board what is that machine you want to know come to us and even if you don't come to us a lot of the times we make sure we, we present you with that information because once you have that information you don't have an excuse for acting as though you don't okay. so. you see I, I would be one of my wish really mm -hmm. is for people in our society to recognize persons who are blind and visually impaired a little more as it relates to the persons 
in high society or persons who 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 would have had the, the the opportunity to make things legitimate, whoever would understand this. You know, I wish that we they would recognize people like us a little more. Well I know? think I think let me put it like that. As far as I know, people as yourself and Joe Bud and Sherry. Uh, to me, I'm elated. Actually, I remember when the council started before both of you were born. I don't think both of you passed 25 years, so it's 27, 28 years. And and you know, I was asked to be a part of it. Actually, I, I didn't see the need. And then, actually, I, I became president for about seven years. So the whole thing, as I'm saying, it has evolved. Where I think, in my opinion, the greater I don't hear people calling people nicknames when I was. Mm. You know, a little boy. Mm -hmm. I think. I think. I mean, you blow the saxophone. What, what do you blow? This? You play instrument. I can't remember the instrument you play. I, I, I a long time ago, I would have been playing the keyboard. Yeah. Right, the keyboard, whatever you play. And you do it with excellence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Sherry this morning, speaking very authoritative, mm -hmm. in command. I'm, I'm also a writer. Right. I'm a poet. A poet. So, so mm -hmm. quite clearly, um, I think uh, there is no need to worry about um, the, the recognition. I think it is coming on merit. It is not coming because of sympathy anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, 25 years ago, you would not have seen this. Mm -hmm. Two people sitting here and discoursing intelligently. You see, I, I, you see I, would, I, I would actually wish for things like, you know, a blind person could, should be able to, to walk into a business place with an application or, uh, um, you know, the, the to, to ask for a job, basically, and, and they wouldn't be looked at in any kind of way as to, well, what kind of job I could provide you with? You know, plenty of people are capable. <laughs> you know, you're you're are, a computer, a computer I'm, what? I'm a computer technician. A computer I'm technician. A computer teacher as well. You're correct. So, you know, again, so again this, this is what I want to instill It's just a matter of time. And yeah. the great thing is that both of you are pioneering uh, a, a new thinking. Uh, as, as I said, um, I remember going to school and, you know, you'll be humiliated by people mm -hmm. trying to either interfere with your dis the, the area of your body that is disability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So really, and Julia, I think you're on the right path and you're doing a service that I don't think the society can pay for because there always will be people with disability. Yes. And more and more we're seeing them making a sort of contribution that they ought to be making to society. Quite so I want to congratulate both you and Sherry. I want to wish both of you well and to say to those who can afford it, if there are people who want to make a contribution of a brain machine, is there a number at the center that they can call? Yes, um, you can reach the you can reach us at the resource center at four three five zero eight two eight four three five zero eight two eight zero eight two eight, and that'll be nice of you, as you yeah. as you heard from the two people there, are as many as thirty five young people in schools in Grenada, and the brain machine is what will certainly help them to mature and to be uh, skilled. So contributing members of yeah. society. society. So if you can afford, if you can afford it, um, please give them a call and make this a gift, a special gift to the young people and the future generations of Grenada. Sherry and Jamal, I want to wish you well. I want to thank you and certainly congratulate you for the work you're doing and hope that um, you are able to inspire many young people as yourself and younger. And I'm sure we all will be greater contributors to the growth of Grenada Caraco and Pini Martin. Uh, Good you. luck and God bless you people. Thank, thank you. you. We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back with more in a moment. There is a big chance to live a new life. Uh, come to Kariku Maroon and String Band Music Festival, uh, April 29th to May 1st, 2011. Uh, eat the smoke food of our ancestors. Uh, drums will spit, sweet strings will captivate. Uh, it's a unique festival of the people filled with authentic cultural education and pure entertainment for the whole family. Living will not be the same after this massive life-changing festival. Make your reservations now. Call 473-443-7948 or visit our website www.caricumaroon.com Take your family and friends out for a treat. 
Come to Sunset City Food Festival this Saturday and every last Saturday in each month from 5 p.m. Come and enjoy Oil Down, Tanya Log, Manish Waters, Cowskin Sauce, Bakes and Fish Cake, Wild Meat, Fruit Juices and everything local. Come out, meet and greet and have a good time enjoying great local foods in a warm and peaceful environment. Music, a live band. Sunset City Food Festival, Diamond Street, Victoria, this and every last Saturday. I'm looking to see you there. It's the football game you have waited for all year long. Friday, April 29th, at the venue you have requested, the National Stadium. As Carib, Quartz, Digicel, and Flo present the full annual Made in Grenada celebrity football match. Gates open at 5 p.m., kickoff time 6 p.m. Come see your favorite celebrities and the best football players of yesteryear under the lights. Admission $10, local food and drinks on sale, plus live performances by Otis and the front page band. Brother B, short three, Mr. The Killer, Fatman George, and Skinny Banton. Your sponsors, Wangiti Rentals, National Lottery Authority, West Hall Estate, Duty Free Caribbean, Colombian Emeralds, Netherlands Insurance, Spice Basket, q Promotions, Georgia Puggins, VSR, Sunshine Promotions, K Central, and the Gem of the Stadium. It's going to be football, more food, and a lot of fun. Be there! I'm Sokka Sterling, and our charity this year, the Pink Ribbon Society.